Three years ago, I made a major change in my life. I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I'd grown in that company over 13 years. A large sphere of influence, a professional network, a subject matter expert. I traveled the world. I got to solve amazing engineering and geoscience problems. I loved that company. I really enjoyed it. And I walked away. I left it all. I took only my guitar off my office wall and a fair amount of apprehension and fear. And I became a professor at the University of Texas at Austin. It was a crazy choice. I had two children who were about to go to university with all of the responsibilities of putting kids through school. I had one who was about to go into middle school. It was a major disruption. To understand why I made that choice, you need to know a little bit about me. I lived a different life before. I did not see the accessibility of education. I did not see the opportunities. In high school, I was working full time at a pizza restaurant. One night, coming home late in the evening, it was a school night. It was dark and cold, a Canadian winter evening. I stopped at a gas station to fuel up my car. As I was filling up the car, there was another person on the other side of the pump fueling up too. Canadians talk to strangers, so we started talking to each other. Partway through the conversation, he looked at me, pointed at my car and said, do you know how that works? That was weird. While I fumbled around with a response, something about four stroke internal combustion, I don't know. They said, no, how it really works. I said, well, I guess I don't know. They came over to my side of the pump and drew a diagram in the frost of the windshield. It was the Carnot theoretical cycle, the engineering principles behind an engine, and they started to explain it to me. They told me that they were an engineering student at the University of Alberta, and that they worked in a laboratory, and what they did was they designed more efficient engines. I was hooked. That was cool, they were cool, this was all cool, and I understood it, it was accessible, it made sense to me. The idea of engineering and science to improve a machine and to improve society, to impact society, and I could understand it, it was accessible, I wanted to be part of it. That night I decided that I was gonna be an engineer or a scientist. I went shortly after that, met with my guidance counselor at the high school, Took him about a minute to review my marks and turn and say, Michael, university is not for everybody. That made me mad. That made me scared. I knew I had to make changes. I called up the pizza restaurant. I said, that full-time thing isn't going to happen anymore. I let the car fall into disrepair. I let the clothes get some holes in them. And I focused on marks. I got the grades I needed to get into the University of Alberta in the engineering program. And when I arrived, I was at home. I was surrounded by amazing faculty, students, ideas. It was profound. I enjoyed so much. I worked so hard. I graduated rank number one in my discipline in engineering. I went on to a PhD and the rest. That's the path I took. Now we get back to the question of why did I leave and become a professor at the University of Texas? Well, the idea, the opportunity to give back to the system that had given me so much, to be a voice like that young engineering student, to be able to speak to many and tell them in an accessible manner about their opportunity, their opportunity to participate, to be part of that. I was so excited. I arrived on campus, I jumped in both feet. I learned about the role engineering. I learned about the idea of the research mission, the educational mission, a professor to serve the state of Texas and beyond, I was, I was in full full on board, excited to do it. I had to make a plan though. When I left the corporation, I left everything behind, remember? So I had to build a network. I didn't have a network outside the company. I had to support my students. I had to add my voice to the core supporting STEM. And so I started to devise a plan and I started to look at all of the synergies, all of the opportunities, how everything would work together, my grand plan to be able to truly give back and have an impact on many people. And I start to work on that. I thought, I'm a professor now, so I have a platform. I have a voice now, I can speak. I went on Twitter, I opened up an account, I start to make statements. Spatial data is biased, we gotta do something about that. No one cared. Well, Ricardo Olea had a great primer on geostatistics and data analytics, my discipline. Nobody cared when I shared other people's resources and work. 
Well, I knew health and safety and the environment were important. So I talked about that and still no one cared. I remembered that social media often is about rage. So I thought I can do that. I put my beret on and I started to rage a little bit. I said, repeatable research now. And of course, nobody cared. What was going on? I took a step back and I thought about what was happening. And what I realized was I had nothing to share and nobody was listening. I had started all strong and enthusiastic, excited about my role and over what seemed to me to be a string of disappointments and perhaps failures. I started to become a little bit worn down. I was on the road every week, knocking on every possible door, talking to every possible stakeholder, trying to make any deals I could to support my program, to get my students supported. I started to get discouraged. I started to wonder if maybe I was capable, maybe a bit of imposter syndrome sunk in. I thought critically about what was going on. And what I realized was it was like I had this tank and it, the tank was mostly empty. All I had was maybe some of my musings, my ideas, and other people's resources. And it was like I had a tap, and the tap was just dripping and making a little puddle, but on the other side was this wall. And the wall was blocking me from that goal of truly having impact with my voice, the network, and assisting and supporting my students to truly give back. And that puddle was not going to erode that wall away. I was stuck. About that time, I took a step back and I thought, well, I'm an educator. I'm here to teach. I'll focus on that, focus on supporting my students. What I did was I looked at all of the intellectual hurdles along that path from where I started to where I was now. And I looked at each one of them, each one of the complexities, and I tore them apart and I designed tools, resources, bridges to help students to be able to get past each one of those intellectual hurdles. The resources expanded. Well-documented workflows, codes, interactive workflows where people could play with the machines. The best way to learn is to play with the machines. Even on the weekends, I was coding a Python package in spatial data analytics just days before my students would use the code to gain experiential learning, fingers to keys. Now, I took a step back and I looked and I realized that I had all of these great resources. It was like that tank was full of good resources and I was starting to do a better job supporting my students, but it was like it was all just leaking up like water from a sieve and making a puddle. It's a bigger puddle now than before, but it was not going to erode away or destroy that wall and get me to where I really wanted to be. Once again, I reflected on what was going on. I thought, now with all of these great resources, maybe this is the time for me to think about my voice again. And I did that. I started to work with my voice. I started to look carefully at the inventory of resources that I had built. And I realized that these are not just resources. These are products, valuable products. Products that can help a student gain new skills and knowledge, products that can help a working professional gain new skills and add more value, products that can help a person who's not considering STEM to maybe think about STEM because something was accessible and they saw it was powerful, like I did so many years ago. I realized I needed to find a way to take those products and project them at the wall, focus them so they don't just dribble away. To me, I needed a jet nozzle to put some force behind that potential energy. And to me, that, that jet nozzle was social media. All of those products could be focused at the wall and allow me to bust through that wall and get to my goal of truly having impact, building that network, supporting my students, and also adding my voice to the course of STEM. It was perfect. And YouTube, each one of my carefully recorded lectures could fit within playlists, well presented for anyone in the world to be able to watch and understand. They were all linked to GitHub, 
where all of the well-documented workflows, interactive demonstrations were available for experiential learning and all of the Python package and other codes and algorithms to support people. And then on Twitter, I could take on a new voice. And that voice, I called it Geostats guy. And I was able to communicate positivity, encouragement, accessible science and engineering to anyone in the world interested. And people started to listen because I could point to these valuable products and people could see value, find value by tuning in. It was incredible. And the response was great. People all over the world start to listen to and use this content. Tens of thousands of people per month checking out and using this content to make impact. The thing that was amazing for me was getting feedback like a set of professors from around the world telling me about how my online content, those products, allowed them to switch rapidly to online learning with the advent of COVID and to be able to continue their educational mission while protecting the safety of their students. I've been contacted by high school teachers who take my content and share it with their students so that they'll be encouraged to work in engineering and science and they can see a professor who's accessible and speaking in a way that they can understand. While I was giving everything away, and it seemed like a great idea to me, but I wasn't sure, and at one point, the Cockrell School of Engineering, they called me up and said, we'd like to talk to you. We've heard you've been doing something a little bit different. And I was a little bit worried, to be honest. But when I sat down with them, what I found out was that they thought it was really cool. They wanted to promote it. They gave me a platform through the interview to promote this idea of just sharing all of the content. What is a professor's secret weapon? It's to make and share valuable products on social media. As simple as that. What's the benefits? There's so many of them. First and foremost, imagine all of my lectures are openly reviewed by anyone in the world. I mean, literally, I've been in arguments or debates, but prior to a lecture to discuss issues or opportunities to improve, to the German professor who corrected me, you're right, I made it a mistake in my assumption of homoscedasticity, but we got it right in the end. To my students, many students will contact me interested in my courses. I get to point to all of the content and say, go ahead, look, see what I teach, and now you decide whether or not you want to invest your time, your resources to join me on this journey. And guess what? The demand for my courses does not wane. In fact, it's the opposite. I have to keep adding seats. In addition, I can offer my students something beyond the semester, evergreen content that will continue on perpetually. And it does. I tell the students on the last day of class, the door remains open. We're family now. Come back, check out the content, keep working with us. And it happens. Students who are in full-time hires, students who are in internships, students who have moved on to the next year are contacting me and using these resources in order to continue building new skills and adding value. Now, what this results in is a lot of working professionals. I go to companies all the time, and working professionals tell me that they're using my content in order to gain new skills. People are afraid in this digital transformation. They're concerned about job security, and we can provide them brand new tools, powerful skills to be able to keep adding value. In addition, new collaborations open up. All kinds of potential stakeholders and collaborators want to work together with myself and my students. It's been wonderful. It's a great thing indeed. Finally, if you are in touch with the practice, you're in touch with the community, it's a pipeline of research ideas that supports my team. But besides all of this, the most important thing to me, I go back to that gas station that cold winter night in Alberta. And I imagine tens of thousands of individuals are using my content every month. How many of them might, have, might be just like I was? And will realize by accessible products in technology that they themselves could also participate and join us. We can remove the barriers and we can make our campus a more welcoming place by going beyond our campus. Thank you.